¿Qué tal? Y saludos desde el Hotel Crosby. Aquí estoy con una de las grandes favoritas, uno de los grandes personajes de esta serie de Netflix, Orange is the New Black. Thank you so much for your time, Musa. Thank you for having me. Congratulations on this new award that you got. Thank you. What does it mean for you to have not only the love of the fans, but also to have this type of recognition at the Critics' Choice Awards? I, I'm, I'm speechless. I'm really just speechless about the whole thing. I feel uh, humbled by it. I feel truly honored um, and just grateful. This is the first time I've ever done a TV show and to be recognized in this way by my castmates as well, you know, like it's the support of everybody. I just feel so just humbled, truly. You built somebody very special. There are many sides to Crazy Eyes and you gave her a voice, a way of moving, a way of interacting with, with others. Uh, where did you find this person? How did you find the way in which she acts, who she is? You know, Alfonso, I just wanted to connect with love. When I first read it, it just felt to me, this is a love story. Mm. This is somebody who is desperate to seek love, find it, have it. And so all I wanted to do was to honor that and be truthful to that, honest to that experience, um, and just tell that story as best I could. And she's quirky and she has you know, her little ticks and things that she does, you know. She, she, maybe not everybody should be peeing on the floor and all of these sort of things, but she's, she's loyal and I just wanted to display that as much as I could. She has had a very beautiful impact in audiences, but I am sure that that has also happened in set because I am sure that to facilitate her to be free and who she is, you need the help of the rest of the cast. How has that worked for you? Absolutely, you're 100% correct. The company, the entire show works. Genji has said it before, Genji Cohen, our creator, that it's an ensemble show and that it takes the entire group to make it. And it's so true. When we're playing scenes, if I'm talking and I'm playing with my castmates, I feel them being present with me the entire time. And similarly, I hope I'm giving that energy back out to them. And we can't do it alone. It's standing on each other, that, that's how it happens. That's really, truly how it happens. In the first season, you got a visit from your parents, and then we had so many questions, questions that in the second season get answered. Not all of them, of course, because I'm sure that there's so much more to her than we still need to find out. Uh, how is for you the, the, that dosification of getting to know more about her? Because as an audience, we're discovering, but for you as a performer, you get to find more about her as, as you get the, the scripts. How has it been for you? It's been an adventure. You know, I come from the theater, so we have a play, and the play isn't written along as you're doing it. It's the beginning, middle, and the end. You know the beginning, middle, and the end of the story. But it's been really exciting to watch a, a person grow. It almost feels like a child. You know, you, you, you meet them in the beginning of life, but as time goes on, they become more and more developed, more and more shaped in different ways, and you don't love them any less or any differently. You just come to know them better. You just know more and more and more and more information about it. So it, it's exciting, and it's also useful and helpful to help, it help you in um, really understanding why certain choices get made. Mm -hmm. You know, for example, when I learned that her parents were these academics and she comes from a sort of you know, certain uh, environment and community, it made sense to me, oh, this is why she loves literature, and this is why she loves Shakespeare, and this is why she's quoting poetry all the time. And when I met the, her backstory, and you see how even just as a little kid, she's been rejected a lot in her life, it made sense to me, oh, this is why she's constantly pining for love. She wants to be loved because she never known it. And that is something that we as an audience get these women are in jail because they have committed crimes, but we get to know these stories and we create uh, an empathy with them. Yes. And I think that's the reason why we connect with this character. What do you think is, according to you, that special connection between people and crazy eyes? I don't know why people connect with her. I know that I connect with her, her willingness to love, mm -hmm. no matter how much it costs her. 
I know I connect with her openness, her brute honesty, for better or worse. You know, when you deal with kids, like when I first read the script, they described her as innocent like a child, except children aren't scary. And I remember thinking to myself, so everything that she does is with a, it's for good. It comes from a place of good. And it's always with good intention. And she might act first and think second, but the intention is always good. And so I think that innocence is something that I find is so attractive about her, that, that willingness to just be and be free no matter what. And that's what I love about her, and that's what I try and protect mm -hmm. as well. I want to ask you about um, a side to her, because there is some level of frailty, mm. and there's somehow some level, an undertone of a condition. Mm. And when you act and you perform a character like this, it can become a caricature very yeah. easily. But you don't do it. And I'm sure that that's the reason why you get all these recognitions and, and this, this understanding of how wonderful your task with her is. How do you measure the limits to those moves and, and, and the way in which you execute her? That's a great question. I mean, I think it really comes back to being honest. I really believe you can do and play anything if it comes from an honest place. Her intention, if my intention is to just keep it honest, and if for Suzanne, the reason why she's doing it is just, I just want you to like me. I just want you to love me. I want you to see me. How it comes out is how it comes out. It doesn't really, ha I don't try to rely on it. Do you know what I mean? Yes. I don't try to lean on it. It's just, this is really, the tr this is the truth. This is the truth of who this woman is. She blinks a lot. She does bed on her nails a lot. She does react very strongly. That is who she is, and it's uncontrolled, and I don't know if it's nurture or nature at this point, you know, because it's a greater conversation, but I, it just has to be the truth. That's all. If you can stand and live in the truth, nobody can ever question it and that it's for life. My last question is about the meaning of Orange is the New Black to Uzo. Oh my gosh. You want me to cry. <laughs> <That's> like, <laughs> the, the meaning of it? Heart pressing. It's left an impression on my heart. Life changing. You know, the day I found out I was going to get this job, I was thinking about leaving this business. Had planned to leave this business. Um, it's brought into my life so many incredible new friends and chosen family members that I couldn't even imagine. It's made me think and rethink the way that we consider these women in this story and across this country and world as well. It's just changed my life. And I'm, I'm touched when we reach out to Twitter and we see people who have felt impacted by the show because it has impacted me as well. And you have impacted us, so thank you so much. Thank you very much. A pleasure. Thank you, an absolute pleasure. <laughs> thank you very much. That was wonderful.